of white glazed terracotta, going up to the lightest of six at the top. Terracotta is a very dense, thick, fireproof material, which makes a lot of sense, considering that the Wrigley Building was the first building built north of Michigan Avenue after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Coincidentally, it was also the first building in downtown Chicago to be fully equipped with air conditioning and electricity at the same time. Up ahead of us, on our right hand side, we are right here at the base of the second tallest building in the city of Chicago, and the fifth tallest building in the United States. Of course, I'm talking about the Trump International Hotel and Tower Chicago. Designed in 2009, Prince Architect here is a man named Adrian Smith, who, by the way, is a very nice man. I met him. Me and AJ, practically best friends at this point. He's born and raised in Chicago's West Side. And also today, world famous for designing the tallest building in the world right now, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It's the same dude, and he's from Chicago. Trump Tower, second tallest in the city. Check it out all the way up. Take a look. 1,362 feet tall. That is 415 meters for any and all international guests. It is also, not a lot of people know, the heaviest concrete structure in North America, made out of 720 million pounds of concrete. If my math is right, that's like 327 million kilos, or in a different perspective, that we can all understand, that's like 22,000 dollars. Coming up here on our right, get those cameras out and ready. Because we're about to be right next to, officially, according to Instagram, last year, the most photographed buildings in downtown Chicago, finished in 1965 and 1967 by Bertrand Goldberg. These are the two towers of Marina City. If you want to think about Marina City structurally, think of them like flat, and the rooms come out like flower petals, thinner at the door, and wider to get out towards the balconies don't like to show up to those reservations. And if they don't show up on time, nine times out of ten, you would swipe somebody else's spot. So it's always worth going. Maybe just to check, see if they have any tables open. I'll be here on the right hand side though, is a relic of Chicago history, the Reed Murdoch Center. Designed in 1914 by George Nimmons, the Reed Murdoch Center right now is the last warehouse building left on the main branch of the Chicago River. Not a warehouse inside, but it's the last warehouse building we've got on the main branch. It also used to be symmetrical. You notice? Over here on the right hand side, coming up, we're coming up here on 300 North LaSalle. 300 North LaSalle here is one of our many green and environmentally friendly buildings in the city of Chicago. Check it out, it's a 72 story glass, eco friendly high rise finish in 2009. It is Platinum LEED certified which is the highest LEED certification you can get because of the way that it cools the building off. Would you believe me? And oh yeah, up until 2008, the Merchandise Mart had its own postal zip code, 60654. Over here on our right hand side, we're going up here on an area of town called Wolf Point. Now Wolf Point is under some heavy developments at the moment, uh, two thirds of the way done though. So right here on our right, on the corner, this is Wolf Point East. This was just finished last November, so it's brand spanking new. The bottom four floors are a mix of some recreation space and then also uh, like a little bit of office space too. But the other 66 floors going up are all a nice healthy mix of condos and apartments, which is like you units survive. These stories all quite completed. Wolf Point over here, if you were looking at this area in the 1830s, you'd be looking at what was downtown Chicago, a ratio that we still maintain to this day. But it was inside one of those taverns that somebody probably raised a glass and said, all right, now, what do we call this place? And the answer was, of course, Chicago, which is the French pronunciation of a Native American word, Chicaqua. So the Native Americans would walk around this area and say this word, Chicaqua, all the time. The settlers heard them say this word so frequently, they automatically assumed that had to be the word they used for the area, and that's what they wanted to use too. 
and after a very long version of the French telephone game that came out as Chicago. Chicago is the Potawatomi Indian word for smelly wild onion. <laughs> Historians found out all they were doing was complaining about how bad the area smelled. And much to their grand amusement, the settlers started to call their piece of land the Big Stinky Onion. So, you've heard of New York, the Big Apple. I'll do you one better. Welcome, my friends, to the Big Stinky Onion. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever. All right, moving on. So, we are heading down the north branch of the Chicago River right now. Take a look off on the left-hand side. The Fulton House here is the oldest building we're going to see on the tour. Designed in 1898 by Frank Abbott, remodeled by architect Harry Weiss in 1982. Harry Weiss, very popular architect here in the 80s. Loved a lot of nautical themes on his buildings. See at the top of the Fulton House, the round porthole windows, and then the starfish all over the side here. We see his nautical themes at play again over here on the left hand side with his Chicago River Cottages here in 1988. I mean, it's got its own marina, more of the porthole windows, and you also notice, right, it's got all these like triangles all over the place. And the triangles are the same shapes of sails on his beloved sailing ships. Because Harry Weiss was also an avid sailor, which is why he liked all these nautical things. Back over here on our right hand side, though, this is the EBC, the East Bank Club, designed by Ezra Gordon and Dan Levin in 1979. It is a private upscale health facility. Oh. Or in English, that's a very expensive gym. Oprah and Obama still have annual memberships here that they still pay for. They just have them paying downtown in a minute. But when it first came up here in 1979, right, it didn't have anything on the back end side, right? No windows, no trees, no ivy, no walkway, no flowers, no anything. Because in the late 70s, the condominium in the city called the Soft Loft. Which, if you don't know, is just a lot of exposed wood, exposed bricks, pipes, wires, concrete, that sort of thing. The only walls in the place are the walls around your bedroom and your bathroom to give you the least amount of privacy necessary while maintaining a very open and therefore minimalistic floor. Chicago will get its first permanent non-Native American resident. Known as the father of Chicago, his name was Jean-Baptiste Pointe-du-Sable. He was a Frenchman of Haitian descent, married a local native Potawatomi princess, learned their language and their culture, and existed with them in and around their tribe, actually, up until he left the area in 1800. 1803, Fort Dearborn is constructed, the first military fort in the newly acquired Midwest, because 1803, now, on the end of this ride, you guys are going to know all about the Chicago Fire, however, not right now. I'm going to wait and talk a little bit closer to where the fire started. Just so you guys can have a better visual of that. But just to skip to the end real fast. This fire burns down 66% of the city, which is about 17,000 buildings, and we needed to rebuild. We needed something to bring Chicago back on the map. And that was the upcoming World's Columbian Exposition of 1893, which was the United States' cultural and technological answer to the World's Fair of 1889 that was held in Paris, which is why this is also sometimes referred to as the World's Fair of 1893. The Columbian Exposition was between a couple of cities, seven cities, but their name in the Hat and Fair of Town. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, St. Louis, DC, and Chicago. All say their best politicians in Congress in 1890 to start lobbying for the rights of the fair. Yeah. 
Their strategy was simple. Just keep talking. And you know what? We're good at that. And worked. That's what we did. We just talked. Day in, day out. Stood up, sat down. Filibustered in hours long shifts we had to just do constantly lobby the stair right into the ground. Which is exactly what happened in 1893. We're called stack, which is wood and plastic.
the boat. I'll let you guys enjoy this view. Uh, we'll pick up the tour here in a few minutes. Any questions? Thank you. 